my hat. What's the deal? So everybody who's been living here in Ecuador for a while, you can tune out now because you're going to be bored to death. You already know all of this. Or probably know all this or should know all this. But those that are relatively new or people that are coming here, um, Panama hat is a topic of interest. Quick history lesson. It's believed that the name came from Teddy Roosevelt after the 1900s when he went to the Panama Canal to visit the construction and he was seen wearing one of the hats because it's hotter than hell there. And uh, being the first visit out of the country for a president of the United States that never happened before, there was worldwide press there all over the place. And they took pictures of him in this hat. Now, if you remember, he used to have this Rough Rider hat. So he had this image of wearing this Rough Rider hat. And then all of a sudden, he's wearing this white tropical hat. And so it made all the news. He was in Panama, so they called it a Panama hat. Is that where it came from? Actually, no. Decades before that, Ecuador was exporting these hats and the closest export place was Panama. And from there they would ship them to Asia, they would go off to Europe, and so they were called Panama hats because that was the point of destination or exportation for these hats. And that's where the name actually came from. So what about these hats? What makes these things such a legend? Why are there songs written about these? I, I did a quick check on YouTube and there's, there's a bunch of songs on there dedicated to these hats. So what's the deal? Well, there's a grass that grows, Tokia, and that grass you can strip down to a very fine thread. Now this hat is a, a pheno. It's not the top of the line, it's certainly not the bottom of the line. If you look, it's really soft, it's really pliable. It's very light. Um, you almost don't feel it on your head. I don't like hats, but this one, I swear, you don't even notice it really. I do it for these videos just because I have the hat rather than throw it away. Hey, it's a good theme. We're talking about Ecuador. What better than an Ecuador hat? So these artisans for generations have handed this down and you have these weavers and they make these hats and some of the, the very best ones are considered to be the Monte Cristi and they're called Superfino and these are very 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 tight uh, threads and uh, it will lay down like a piece of cloth but it manages to keep its shape they're beautiful hats. In the States, these hats will sell $800, $1,200. Here, you're, you're going to, for that particular kind of hat, uh, you're going to pay two or $300 in any of the known stores or locations. And if you go to some outlying, you might pay $100 for that hat. Now, this hat, I priced it, this exact same hat, I priced it at the the hat factory in Cuenca and it was $80. I bought this one directly from a weaver. I was down in Vicabamba and there was a woman there who worked in one of those. She's a grandmother or great grandmother and she still does this as a sideline and she made this hat and there's no price tags. I offered her $20 and she took it. And she's happy, I'm happy. And very nice hat. I wish I liked hats more. So what's the story on the hat? If you come here and you're gonna buy a hat, it's very easy, if you're in Cuenca, you can just go down to a, a number of hat stores. There's one or two museum slash factories that you can go to and do a little tour. They're very interesting, um, I recommend them. But of course, when you buy the hat, 
you're not buying it from the weavers, you're buying it from you know an operation that has more overhead, and you're gonna pay more. So this $20 hat becomes an $80 hat. I don't think $80 is a bad price. $20 is a better price. If you go to the smaller outlaying towns where these weavers make these hats, that's where you can really make a good deal if you're looking to make a good deal. Uh, on the other hand, that takes some hunting. Now, personally, um, I think that might be part of the fun to go out and explore these towns. Some people come here and they plop down into Cuenca and they're content being there forever. And that's fine. I'm not, it's not wrong. That's, that's great. I personally like to get out and explore and like to look around. I like to see these small towns. And I wasn't looking for a hat, but oh my God, this particular day, it was so hot. The top of my head was burning off. I, I was really concerned it was that bad. I had this long walk in the middle of nowhere until I got into the town of Ucabamba. And then you, you get into the uh, overhangs and shade and whew, I was, I was concerned. I could feel my head burning. And I said, I better get myself a hat. And that's, and that's how I ended up with this hat. So I, I wore it that day, and I really haven't worn it much since. I probably should start. Um, the sun is fierce here. So that's the general story on these hats. They're an amazing piece of artwork. If you really look at the good ones, if you look at them, you can appreciate the quality, and there's a, tech, there's a texture a feel to these hats you won't find anywhere else. People refer to them as a straw hat, and I don't think anything could be further from the truth or, or from an actual description. Straw is coarse and stiff, and in, in the cheapest hats you might find that, but in any kind of decent one, it's not like that at all. Like I said, I mean, this is like, it's like feeling cotton cloth. It's very smooth. So, if you had questions about the Panama hat, that's a short history. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, as always, go ahead and put it in the comments, send me an email. Um, thank you very much for watching. Talk to you later. You know you could. place to locate. Now, the known town, I'll add this, the known town is Monte Cristi, and the hat is named after that. Now, my understanding are there are no actual weavers left in Monte Cristi. Now, that may not be, that may not be true information, so I'm not trying to make anything up, but I've read in a couple places that they don't really exist there anymore. The weavers are in the outlying areas. Then they gather them up and they bring them into the markets to sell them and export them and box them up and that, like that. And you have a similar thing in Cuenca where a lot of these hats are purchased from individual weavers.